want to talk about a very important topic and it's a topic that may be impacting many of your lives or it may have in the past impacted many of your lives and the stimulus for making this talk is I received a message from someone I'm not going to obviously share their details but I will share the message in this message a man wrote me and said he was new to listening to the channel and if I had any advice because he was bound by the chains of pornography and masturbation for 40 years of his life and he said he tried everything to escape it other than suicide and so I want to speak on this topic it's a topic I've said over and over is a hugely hugely negative impactful topic for humanity and I would put it in a framework linguistically of a satanic sex matrix sex as a weapon of control and sex as a means to place humans in a vibratory state that can feed the the architects of that system how you perceive the world around this topic obviously matters so I'll start at the beginning and make something clear however you're going to linguistically uh, approach this the reality is this when you engage in the pornography industry what you are doing is selling your soul selling your attention to a satanic matrix what I mean by that is you have the collective whole of life and the human who chooses to walk the path of finding the soul embodying the human body in all of its entirety here and now to appreciate to partake in the glory of life in the present moment in that whole collective when you do that you give attention to life consciousness the divine revealing life to your senses you are here in the present moment you are not throwing your language and your opinions over it you are still in your mind and life is revealed to your senses in that state you are collective in your attention on the whole and when you give attention to the whole like that you get something back you get joy and wholeness and contentment in my experience you get opportunities for a better life you get the vitality to live a good life the confidence the strength inside that whole there are those who don't take note of embodying the present moment and giving thanksgiving for life and so what they do is they set up matrices little pyramids inside that hole and at the top of that pyramid in the view of the world you can see you have a CEO or a director and that director is receiving money and material physical wealth for your attention you are at the bottom of that pyramid as a user you give your attention to this satanic matrix and in exchange for your attention you get meaningless short-term pleasure and inside that system the person at the top and on the way up they profit from you selling the attention of your vitality the attention of your soul now once they have received their profit they are undoubtedly devoid of the whole and because they are devoid of the whole they then engage in another 
matrix, satanic matrix of pleasure in some which way, shape or form. And so that first satanic matrix of pleasure that you have put yourself into creates money for the man at the top and he goes into another satanic matrix and he becomes a user at the bottom of that pyramid and there is another person at the top who receives benefit from there. That person is no doubt devoid of the whole and so they keep going and this is the bottomless pit. These satanic matrices are the bottomless pit of selling the attention of your life into the short-term pleasures of the world. Now, however you linguistically perceive that, it's draining your vitality. But what I am going to say is that there is a spiritual element to that behavior. Because at the top of that pyramid is not actually a CEO or a director. It's a spiritual force. And this spiritual force, this interdimensional force, they, as we have traditionally labeled it, the demonic realm, they feed off of the lower vibrations of humans. They feed off of that. And so as you sell your soul, which is what you are doing, you sell your soul in exchange for physical pleasure. You are lowering your vibration and as a sovereign child of God, the whole when you surrender in thanksgiving to the whole, to the presence of God, and you say, the vessel gives itself back to that experience. You can't give your life and your body to God. It was never yours to give. It was God's. The illusion inside your mind that was programmed into you by the matrix of the system we live in, believed that it had its own life, but it didn't. It only separated you from real living. Real living is to be in the wholeness. Every man and every woman should walk the path of embodying the human body with all of their soul as much as possible. Embodying the will of unconditioned love into the experience that they are having. To be present with the activities of compassion uh, and thanksgiving that they are engaged in, which is life. Every human should choose to be a son or a daughter of God, a divine human. This is the highest path of a human, to walk as, the, as an embodiment of the divine, to embody as much of the divine, your soul, into the human vessel as possible. As we are born into the system we are programmed in a, in a way whereby we have a technology inside the human vessel which separates us from that because this requires something it requires surrender it requires a letting go the technology you are you are given is one which is told to program a self-image into itself and to not embody the soul. And so you are taken into this self-image program that tells you you will get the cookie in this state of consciousness where we incorporate time in our function. And so we say you'll get the cookie at the end of school, at the end of college, at the end of uni, when you retire. And so the human, instead of looking to enjoying and, and aligning with the participation of life, goes on this journey of looking outside of that present moment for the joy of life somewhere in the future. In some retrospect we learn linear and so it is required but the true joy of life doesn't require time. Time is an invention of the mind. The true state of consciousness where you're here and now and you you fall into the joy of the whole it requires no time. It's a timeless state where you, your, your skin now connects you to the all going on, the, the, the ever going on manifestation of the now. In the linear, your skin tends to separate you from a very difficult world. This is how the different states of consciousness work. But despite that, 
on that in that state where where you begin to to need pleasure it's a little like plato's cave plato's cave if you don't know it they say imagine there's uh, there are humans prisoners chained to a wall to chained in a cave in the dark and they see nothing but shadows are shown in front of them of objects all of their life from start to finish and one escapes and goes outside and sees the world, sees the sun, sees the, the towns and the forests and the animals. And he comes back to tell those chained and they can't believe him because they can't comprehend it. Many have been on this linear progressive state of consciousness in this notion that they are a person or a nationality, a birth certificate identity so long that they can't remember the awakened state of joy. And as you tell them about it, 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 it doesn't go in. They can't compute because they have no reference for it hardly anymore because they barely remember the childhood state. When you go into that, this is the poison of the system. There are higher dimensional forces moving in this world. Jin, demonic in Christianity. I've, for whatever reason, developed the capacity of being a seer. And I've seen that other realm. And for those of us enslaved in this satanic sex matrix, there is what appear to be a species who are using the energy of that to to eat from the friction of your soul as a child of God separating from the presence. Look at it this way, the noise. <whistles> You're in the as part of the experience, but the, the origin, your soul is somewhere up here in that whistle. They abide in a higher dimension than here, but they cannot access up here. You can access up here. This is why Yeshua told you, you will have dominion and cast out demons. If you are truly born into the highest vibration a human can be by connecting to the God, not of this world, but to your soul, your father, where the soul is born from, you will have access to that higher frequency. They live here. And you, if you don't elevate above or under their catchment, as they can't be up here, they wish to become source instead of surrendering and in thanksgiving and embodying the whole, they wish to become it through technological advancement and intellectual capacity. Now, I am not anti-technology. Technology helps us immeasurably. It's important. But they are keen to become God with technology over all else. They are not of any interest to them if they hurt anyone on that journey. And when I had a conversation with this species, they told me, it's nothing personal, but we are going somewhere. And just like driving a car and hitting insects where you don't say anything, you don't care, we perceive you like that. You live sh such short lives, you're just meaningless. But we need the energy because you still have your soul connection. This is important when you're going into these things to see all of that because you're not going in now for an activity that was sold to you as normal you're selling your soul to these entities to these dark forces to the satanic realm to the demonic realm the demonic realm does not exist just to torment you it exists to feed off you it exists to collect your energy it exists to collect the energy of you falling away from the the the, the soul energy that you have capacity for and the friction of that falling away from what I've seen is the energy they require. I've seen this and when you go into these little matrixes you selling your soul into there piece by piece your attention. Having that worldview for myself is very important because then it's not just some liberal notion of free sexuality that we have been sold as a lie. It is the selling of your soul and its attention into the physical pleasure. The God of this world is Satan. Yeshua's father is not of this world. His kingdom is not of this world. But that kingdom can be brought into this world. And so when you see that 
it's very important. But on a physical level, you get nothing back from selling into those mini matrixes, nothing but pleasure and corrosion of your soul. You cannot become the best human you can, the divine man, by engaging in those matrixes. You must separate and become part of the whole. And when you feed and sell your attention, if we can use that term there as well, when you give your attention to Source, to God, to the wholeness of the embodiment of the soul in, in your vessel, you get something back. You get joy, you get fulfillment, you get energy, you get vitality, you get synchronistic opportunities to build a better world and a better life for you and your loved ones. You get, you get mystical experiences that answer so much. And when you're caught in that linear state, you're just full of questions, full of questions and very few what ifs because of the arrogance that's bred into there. When I have periods where I don't, f okay, so let's, we must be mature. I am sexually active. I have a beautiful wife. She's 10 years younger than me. Of course, I, I find her beauty uh, alluring to me. I have children. I will have more children. What happens if you can see this? This is very important because you can lock down your computers with passwords and all of this physical stuff and it'll help you. But I feel what I'm speaking here is a transformation must come from within. If I make love with my wife, and of course I enjoy it, I'm in the wholeness of life, we both are, we feel love for each other, and in the moment it arises and we express it. It's not planned, it's not scheduled, it arises from, from the energy of our bodies and we express love making together. Beautiful. It's a gift in that sense. Create life. It's such an, impress an important uh, force for us uh, and, and such an impressive manifestation of love. The energy becomes a memory of that experience. Now the next day, let's say I'm not aligned with the whole. For whatever reason, I've become disaligned with the whole. I've moved away from my center. Now I look and in my memory I say, I have a memory that this was, this was nice. I'm going to go to it, not because it was revealed to me by life, but because in my memory I, I know it felt good and maybe feeling good like that will take me out of being misaligned with the whole. I am guilty of that still as a man because I'm a human being. And so sometimes that will happen. And if any time I wish to initiate relations based upon memory, based upon not feeling great in the moment and looking for a way to feel great, this is akin to the same problem I faced as a young man with pornography. It's exactly the same. And what it is, if you can look at this, it's very important. It's the movement of your mind. It's the movement of the technology of that linear progressive state of consciousness and so that movement of the mind is now trying instead of recentering in the still wholeness of God's presence here and now it's looking into its memories to try and access pleasure and many people have done that so much they are stuck in an infinity loop of pleasure because they don't remember the whole state and so I'm guilty of that still and my wife and I, we have periods where we take vows of celibacy in our relationship and it makes us closer and more intimate. And then when we are intimate together, it's more vibrant, passionate and, and beautiful. And I'm not referencing semen retention because that's a practice I believe most men should look after this important life-giving vitality. I'm referencing no activity whatsoever, so the two are, are separate. And I'm exchanging there something that is the most alluring thing in the physical world for me, the, the intimacy with my, with my beautiful wife, for time with God. And this makes us more whole. And when we reconnect after our, after our vow is over, we, we connect in a much deeper, more passionate, wonderful level every time. And so I'm not free of it. But the movement of my mind is something I have more ability as I've practiced and understood this to watch and to see. Your addiction to pornography 
is reliant on the existence of the self-image and the movement of the mind in that linear state of consciousness image of who you are. In the surrendered state where the vessel is filled with spirit, that's not there. The voids and gaps that you feel a need to fill with that is filled with the joy of spirit. And so you, you, you have to see that the existence of the initial ego of the matrix was programmed into you, the birth certificate identity, its traumas, etc., is where the existence of your addiction lives. And you say you've tried everything, but for myself, I will say, when you come away from that center, when you come so far out that you're caught in this loop of addiction, and I saw your Facebook to this person, they loved God, they were saying, etc., and I believe so. To realign with the presence of God will take some effort to come back to there. You're hooked on this addiction. You have to put in a heroic effort now. 40 years, you've got to be strong. You've got to take away your cowardice. You've got to take away that identity and you've got to realign. And to do that, I see no greater weapon, tool, than fasting. In my life, fasting was that which allowed me to pull back, to drag back into that center. And the problem is that you may well be out here and think I'm with God but actually the program of the self-image is running a program that you are with God you're loved by God God loves you no doubt but the thought that you love God the program that you love God the mental image that you love God is no substitute for the vessel that is surrendered to God it's no substitute because the experience of God's presence is not inside the story of that linear progressive consciousness. The story of surrender in the linear progressive consciousness is not the energetic rebirth to become born into spirit. And this is the problem with Christianity, is many are believing they are reborn in a thought form manner, not an energetic manner. If you are reborn into spirit, that state of consciousness Pornography becomes abhorrent. You can't stand it. You can't stand it because you see it, because you're whole and conscious to what's going on here. You witness the, the enslavement of these poor people who are not whole and are seeking money in the wrong place. They're seeking, they're seeking material gain in the wrong place. They're being manipulated into it, as many of these poor young women who leave the industry and men uh, attest to. And so, you may live in a program, I am reborn in the system of the mind, but this system is where the birthplace of arrogance and pride and everything is. And so the rebirth is the falling away of that and the arising of an identity in God. And the arising of that identity in God, you, you energetically will be repulsed by pornography and masturbation. And therefore, my advice would be to fast. You can f safely fast for two weeks, three weeks. Read how to refeed your body. The only danger is refeeding in a bad way. If you refeed on high water content fruits, you will not get into any trouble. We have to start being mature. I'm not a medical doctor, of course, but I've safely fasted as a man because I got to a point where I said, I would rather die than continue living in this way. And I fasted as I did. That, that, real, that was me dragging myself back into the alignment of spirit, into the whole, out of the matrixes that I was trapped in as a younger man. Now, another thing is that it's going to take strength. It's time to be truly strong. Don't retain this identity of the system and never step out of that. Don't stay with your habits. I'm coming home at night, I watch my, my movies, I, you know, I eat my three meals a day, and I say, oh God, I'm sorry, I'm using porn again. Next day I repeat, break that system in your life. Find a way, you must escape it. You're, in, you're imprisoned, you're enslaved. You're enslaved to a Satan, you're selling your soul to Satan. 
to a satanic sex matrix. Go and sit in nature. I remember that period where I sat in nature and I sat in the forests and, and, and the impulses would come and I just have to sit with the discomfort and say no. I say no to the impulse of this flesh. I say no to the habit that's born into the brain. And, and this is important. Now it's not to say that you will forever become free of it because I, over the years, have fallen back into my flesh. And if anything, the greatest issue, challenge for my flesh has been sex. Food, I can fast for most, longer than most people can. I have control over that. When I fast, I lose the energy to be interested in sex and so it resets it. This kind cometh out except through fasting and prayer, as Jesus said. It's my greatest challenge, and if I've ever fell as a man, it's because of sex. And so I'm not saying I'm perfect at it, but I am saying that you have to acknowledge that it's not okay. And you have to acknowledge that you're not in the presence of spirit when it's a daily habitual activity. Now that said, it doesn't mean you can't be in the service of God whilst wrestling that, because there are no perfect servants here in this world. We are all in a fallen meat suit. We are all participating in that, that struggle. And so you can still serve God whilst you are wrestling these issues. But if you want to know from my experience after my prolonged fasts, etc., and I was really deeply in the spirit, I could only look a woman in the eye. And when I fall into the flesh, I may look at the shape of her. And it's wrong. A man should be looking at a woman in the eye because that would build a great society where women don't feel a need to sell their, their shape to get uh, attention, etc. Where men would respect women that they meet and daughters and mothers that they meet. Not think of ways that they can have some sort of temporary experience with them. And so, fasting will return you to spirit and merely sitting still and watching it come, it will come to you and it will challenge you. I want to do this, I want to do this. And just say no to it, just keep saying no. And in time, the more you say no and you leave there, the more your soul embodies the, the present moment and the experience and the presence of God is with you. Because it's like lifting weights. Every time you say no, your muscle gets bigger and stronger and stronger. And soon it becomes easier to say no. And when you fall into the flesh, you will have the challenges. It will not go forever. But if after 40 years you are still addicted and you, you keep coming away as you are, feeling as you are, then it's time for some heroic effort. And for those young men watching this who are just starting out in this addiction, I hope you've gotten this far in the video to see it. Because inside our world, we've been told it's totally fine to build that program inside you. And the architects of your system, these higher dimensional demonic forces, have told you that it's fine to create that program inside you because it serves them energetically. But the reality is that people like Yeshua and people like myself and many others have experienced this now. Repentance is important. Why? Because repentance is a counter program to the programs of self-destruction that you're creating. You're creating that program of habituated sex. You create a counter program with repentance. You know, Jesus told you the wages of sin are death. I don't believe that that's the stopping of your heart. Your heart will beat while that death happens. That death is the draining of the vitality of your soul from the present moment. And in the instance of pornography, you're selling your soul attention into that satanic matrix to profit people and energetically, spiritually, to feed the higher dimensional negative forces that inhabit this world with you, that possess people in this world and that eat from their soul energy as the person makes that contract with them to sell their soul, to sell the attention of their soul to their pleasure and not to the wholeness and the goodness of God. 
It's a very long video, so I, I will leave it there. I'm sure there are many practical tools in the world you can look at. But I believe a transformation must come from within for us to see with the eyes of spirit so as pornography becomes abhorrent in that sense. Sex used to satiate a lack of wholeness in you even if you're pursuing women and men to satiate a lack of wholeness and joy in you with sexual experience is of course just as demonic and I have seen people like this I know people like this and they are bound in a great darkness and they can get free but only with a heroic effort spent so long in pleasure the the payback is you must sit in a little discomfort to get back to your joy that was all god bless guys